What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to wire up your Escalade switch right here to do the power folding mirrors with the factory remote as you just saw right now. So we're gonna go ahead and do this wire harness right here. And this is what's gonna make this switch right here powerful with the factory remote. And I don't have the truck right now to have it all installed, but I will show you how to do all the wiring in case you already have the truck. And then, you know, this should be pretty simple to do right there. But I'll also try to get some footage on my truck on how to wire them up. It's gonna be the same thing. And next time, whenever I finish this video right here on the actual truck installed, I'll go ahead and link it on top of the screen so you guys can check that out right there as well. So let's go ahead and check it out right now. All right, guys, so to do this setup, it's pretty simple. And of course, you're gonna need the Escalade switch right here. And then you're gonna need one relay, so a SPDT relay with the harness is easier. So that way you don't have to like, you know, do the crimp connections. And then also you need two diodes. So just two, even though, you know, like on the pack, you'll get like extras, but two diodes and then like four pieces of wire. And these are about two to three feet and they're not like super long and they're just like 18 gauge. So it's just primary wire, you know, it doesn't have to be the thickest wire, you know, it's just converting power. So the switch is already going to be doing all the work. This is just, you know, moving the voltage around. So it's not like high current or anything like that. And then also, you know, I like to use a fuse. So I got this fuse holder already wired up in here and I'll link these items down below in the description as well. And this one right here, like I made it, but I just went ahead and did it since, you know, I wanted to go ahead and do the video real quick, but it's pretty much, you know, just a fuse holder and a wire. And I just put a 20 because that's what I have right now, but we don't really need that much power. You could put like a five amp or a 10 amp if you want. It really doesn't require that much power. And I also got this connector right here because I want to make this detachable in case, you know, he needs to service this or for whatever reason, you know, you can just unplug it instead of cutting the wires. And, you know, just like a ground terminal right here. So like I said, I'll just have all these items in the description, the relay, the dials and stuff like that if you want to check them out right there. And I'll just go ahead and start wiring it up right now. It's actually pretty simple, so it's nothing too hard or, you know, it's pretty quick on this one. All right, guys, so for this setup, we're only going to be using four pins out of the relay. So 86, 85, this bottom 30, and the middle one, 87A. The top pin we're not going to use, so not 87. So what I'm going to do right now is deep pin this harness right here, and I'm going to be removing the yellow wire. So we won't be using that. And let me go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so as you can see, now we only have four wires and I already took off that yellow one. And I also did go ahead and crimp the ring terminal right here for the ground. So the black wire is gonna be ground and that's pin 85. And this wiring is actually real easy. So I don't know why GM didn't do it, but you know, we're gonna do it right here. And so this black wire is gonna be pin 85 and it's gonna be grounded. So I already went ahead and put the ring terminal on it and taped it up right there. So now we just got like three more wires right here. And also whenever I ground this, I'm just gonna, you know, ground it wherever I mount the relay. So on the side, probably something like this, you know, so that way they can be mounted on the same screw and grounded right there. So that'll be the ground right there. And then next up, I'll go ahead and do the power wire right here. So the one that has the switch, and as you can see, it's a, it's a little bit long and this one's about like two feet. So there's my pin 86 and that's gonna be ignition and it's already soldered right there. So I just gotta put my heat shrink on it. And like I said, it doesn't have to be super long. This, two, this is about two feet because I don't have the truck with me right now, but it can probably be shorter because it's gonna be all in the column. So I just did it a little bit longer for me because I don't have the truck right now and it should be good like that anyway. So there you can see I already went ahead and tested taped all my power wire. So this is my ignition right here on pin 86. And then I also did go ahead and solder this red wire right here. So pin 87A is going to go to the switch right here. So it's going to get into here. And what I did was extend it. So this is about three, maybe like three feet because it's a little bit, you know, longer. So that way it can reach to the dash, you know, in case I have to like go around it but this is pretty much the longest side of the wire. And so now that I soldered this, and so what I'll do right now is also solder this in right here so that it can be detachable from the switch. So in case anybody ever has to service it and remove it, you know, they don't have to cut the wires. So let me go ahead and do that real quick on this one. And then we'll just be working on this one with the dials. And like I said, this is real simple. So I don't know why GM didn't really do it, but they should have done it. It's actually not that bad. All right, so here you can see I already went ahead and, you know, closed it up and also on the plug right here. So now, you know, it's gonna be detachable. And I'll just go ahead and test tape this right now so that that way, you know, it protects the wire and it also looks better with the black instead of, you know, just red poking out right there. But this is just gonna be the detachable connector right here. And like I said, I just had this, so this is what I used. And I'll link these connectors down below. That way, you know, you can have them detachable if you want. Or if you just wanna go straight wire to wire, then that's fine as well. But you know, I like mine to be detachable. And for the last wire, we're just gonna be putting on the dials right here on the blue wire. So I already went ahead and tied them in here. And this is what you wanna do. So make sure that the stripes on the diodes are facing towards the relay. I'm not sure if you can see right here, there's two little stripes. So make sure they're facing this way towards the relay. 
And then on the two little legs, we're just gonna add the extension of the wire. So I have a blue and a green. It doesn't really matter on the color, but you just wanna extend them that way. You know, they can get the separate signals off the truck right there. So I'll go ahead and solder them up and show you real quick. And let me know what you guys think so far of this install. I think it's too easy. It's actually like pretty simple. And you know, I think GM should have done it before. I think it takes longer to film it than to actually do it. But you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments. So let me go ahead and solder these real quick. So this is pretty much what it should look like right here, you know, the diodes with the stripe going that way. And then, you know, the green and the blue or whatever color you put right there. And I'm going to just close them up with the heat shrink now. So this is pretty much what it looks like right there. Those two wires on the ends and then the ones with the stripe get joined to the blue wire on the relay. Which... And now I can go ahead and close them up with the heat shrink. And that way, you know, they're isolated and they'll be separate. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'll also test the tape it to clean it up and make it look a little bit better. You know, it doesn't look too bad now. So right now I already went ahead and, you know, test the tape it right here. And my ground, you know, I test the tape it right there because I'm going to ground it like this. And then I just ran the other wires. And this is going to be the 87A that we did for the switch side. So I'm going to join this into the switch right here. And that's why it's right there with the quick disconnect. Right over here is the power wire that we did. So this is going to the ignition of the truck. And you know, I have the fuse right there. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a 20 amp fuse. It could be smaller. I just had this. So this is what I'm going to use right now. And then the last two wires right here were on pin 30. So remember, we just soldered it with the diodes. And I just went ahead and closed it all up right there. And it does have the two wires because we do have to get the power locks off the truck. So one for unlock and one for lock. So that's pretty much it right there. And it's actually, you know, like I said, it's real easy. It's not that hard right there. And now we just got to do the switch side right here. So let me go ahead and show you right now. And let me know what you guys think on this harness so far. I think it's real easy and, you know, it should be good to go right there. All right, so for the switch, we're gonna have to open it up and, you know, modify it from the inside. And it's nothing too hard, but you do have to solder inside here. And I'll show you right now, it's real easy. So pretty much what you wanna do, you know, is open it up. It's got like three tabs on each side. So one, two, and three. So I'm not sure if you can see them right there. So that's three right here. And then there's three on this side. And I already have them off, you know, cause it's easier for me to film it like this. So I already went ahead and popped them out and then you just slide it off. And then you'll see the circuit board inside here. And so what you want to do is solder into this area right here. So where the relay is at is on the opposite end. So right here, if you notice this little dot right here, what we're going to do right here is solder into this spot right here. So you see this little spot right here. We're going to have to solder, you know, the wire in there and that way it can give it the signal. So I'm going to insert this wire and then solder it right there. And I'll show you right now how it looks. And what I did was drill a little hole in the bottom right here. So I'm not sure if you can see right there, but, and right here, what I did was, you know, make this little hole right there so I can insert my wire from the back and you can probably see it from here better. So just right there, it's on the bottom. And I just made it here in the bottom, but you can do it wherever you like, as long as, you know, it doesn't damage the circuit board. And what you want to do before is probably, you know, take the circuit board off because it just comes off. So you don't, you know, damage it. And you can see where I made my hole right there in the bottom. So this one, there's a factory one right here and then for the pins but you can make it anywhere around just make sure you know it's not in the way of the circuit board and the circuit board only goes one way so you can't mess it up you know it's not gonna get messed up or anything like that so i'll go ahead and you know take it out right now and solder my wire into the spot right here so what i did right here was insert the wire first and then i also did go ahead and solder on the wire so i'm not sure if you can see it. it's got some solder already so as you can see the wire already has a little bit of solder that way you know it's easier to melt it on top of the original solder and you don't have to like overheat it, you know, cause you don't want to like melt it or something. All right guys, so what I did was pretty much put in the wire in first through the hole that I had already drilled. And you can see that the wire is just sticking out right here. And later on when I'm done soldering it, I will probably like put some glue on it so you know it doesn't pull and come off because you can see that, you know, it just slides right out. So what I did was remove the circuit board and it just slides out, you know, the circuit board goes like this and you can just slide it right out. And then here again, you see the little spot this little circle right here where we're gonna be you know soldering into and what I like to do you know is put some solder on the wire tip first so this one already has some solder that I added but I'm gonna add some more right now and I'll show you right now how I'm gonna solder because it's actually really quick you know you don't want to like overheat it and stuff and I mean if you already know how to solder you probably already know but I'll just show you real quick right here so I'll just put like a little bit of solder so I'll just put like some solder right here on the wire you know, that way it makes it a little bit simpler. There you can see, you know, the, the wire already has a little bit of solder in there. And now on the circuit board, you know, you could just like warm it up.
So there you can see it's already like warmed up. And to make it simple, I'll just add some more solder onto the tip of the soldering iron. So it's gonna make like a bubble. I'm not sure if you can kind of see it, it's, it's on there. And it makes it simpler. So I'll just put it here over the top lightly and I already have a little bit of solder on my iron right here. So it'll just melt right in there. So there it is, it already got hot and that's pretty much it right there. And you can see right here, you know, it looks pretty good and it's already soldered in. So it's not gonna come apart and it's already part of the circuit board now. So now I can just go ahead and insert this right here, you know, like this, cause it just slides in here. So just like that, and I'll pull a little bit of slack right here and I'm gonna just glue this down that way. You know, it doesn't move or anything like that. So there I already went ahead and put my wire in and what I'll do is probably add a little bit of glue right here like hot glue so it doesn't like you know yank out of here if anybody wants to pull on this and that's pretty much what it looks like so you guys let me know what you think on this it's actually pretty simple like I said doing this is not that bad soldering is not really that hard you know but you don't want to burn stuff so you just got to be careful right there and now I can go ahead and you know put the hot glue to close it up and then put the cover and that's pretty much it now it'll be like a plug and play to the other adapter right here so it'll have this adapter so it can be detached in case you know the switch needs to come off then you can remove this plug and then the aftermarket plug so i'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here you know just to kind of hold it in place so that the wire doesn't pull up on it and i just put a little bit you know that way it doesn't get pulled on and you can also do other stuff you know you could do like a little knot in here or a zip tie but i just went ahead and did you know like some hot glue right there so that's pretty much it all you got to do on the switch right here also, whenever you're doing this, make sure you don't lose this little red grommet right here. So it goes in, in this area right here. So the grommet goes right here and make sure you don't lose it because that's what's gonna, you know, make this button keep working. Or other than that, you can see that it's not pushing down. So just make sure to, you know, not lose it right there. And it goes just like that. So that's how the red grommet should look in the middle. And like I said, make sure you don't lose that because that way you can keep your button right here functional and then also with the relay harness and also if you guys like this content don't forget to hit that like button down below subscribe comment you know all that good stuff and let me know what you think on the harness so far i think it was pretty simple and you know it's not hard to do all right guys so to wire up the escalate switch all we're going to be using inside the truck as you can see i already have my dash off so what we're going to be using is the brown connector right here on the bcm so as you can see mine is on the first spot yours may be in a different spot but it's going to be the brown connector so we'll be grabbing the power lock wires from right here on the brown connector and i have a shot from before when i was doing it on my towel right here and i'll try to put it on here so we can check that out right there and then also we're going to be using this connector in here to get the pink wire and get the ignition on it so the pink wire is going to be right here the ignition and then this wire you know runs all through this back wall and you can you know unzip tie it and pull it back out or there's like a clip or something you can pull off and bring it this way and you can also unplug from here and you can get more slack so that's two wires the third wire here and, and for ground you can get it out of any piece like here or you know any metal part in the car will be good for ground just make sure if it has paint just scrape it off and you know usually i i do them around this area so you can see my relays are on this side here you can see on my side you know i grab my grounds from here and then i mount my relays here and you know this is all good ground right here or anywhere back there so for power it's going to be pretty simple like i said we're going to be using the brown connector for the power locks you know any metal right here for ground and you can see my grounds are right here so i did the tapping screws to get all my grounds right here so that's my grounds my power lock wire so unlock and lock and then my ignition wire right here from the pink wire i'll attach the videos right here when i was doing it on my truck right here as far as like the ignition and then the power lock side so it should be the same for all the 99 and 02s if it's going to be like a 03 and up it's going to be a different setup for the power lock wires and you know you can see that i have my toggle switch but this is going to be for the escalate switch that goes right here so let me show you that real quick. Flashback. All right guys, so next up, I'll be getting an ignition wire from the column and you can usually find it like in this area right here. So if you notice this wire harness goes that way and it's gonna be a pink wire. So if you see this pink wire here, that's an ignition. You could probably also use the brown or this orange with your accessories, but I think the best one to use is gonna be the pink one. So that way it doesn't lose power when you crank the truck. And so I'll be using this pink one right here. And you could either graph power from this side or you can follow the harness all the way down here to where the plug is at. And I've already gotten it loose, but you can see the plug right here. And then the pink side is right there. 
So this is a pink wire right here that I'm gonna tap into and it's all the way to the bottom. But you can, you know, unclip it so that it can give you more space. There's just like a clip right there and you can pull it all out. But I'll go ahead and meter it real quick so you guys can check it out. All right, so I have my probe right here on the wire just to show you real quick, but you can see it's zero. So I'll go ahead and put on the key forward and you can see that it'll change right there to 12 volts. So 11.8 .8. and once you crank it, it won't lose power because it's a true ignition wire. So there you can see right there. It didn't drop to zero. It dropped a little bit, but not all the way to zero. So that's a true ignition right there. You know, when you turn it off, it loses power right there. And now that I know that for sure it's the ignition wire, I'll go ahead and tap into it now. And right here, I went ahead and popped out the clip. So you can see that it, you know, it gives you a lot of slack right here. So once you do this, you know, this wire is pretty long. You can grab it anywhere around here that you like. You know, it'll be good to go right there. All right, so I got it all soldered up. And here you can see, you know, I just got to tape it up. All right, so next up, I'll be tapping into the lock wires from the truck, and they're gonna be in the brown connector right here. I already went ahead and unplugged it. And as you can see, you know, it's just right here in the first spot right there. So this BCM has three. Yours may look a little bit different, but it's gonna be the first one, and the connector is brown. So this is the connector. And if you look at this, the locking tab is on top. So this locking tab right there, and then it'll have like a letter on the top side and on the bottom, but this one is row A. And so it's gonna be on row A, and then the wires are this white wire and then this light blue wire. So they're both together. So if you see those right here, so there's one, two, three, and four. So pin three and four from row A. And it's gonna be, like I said, white and the light blue. So I'll be tapping two wires in here, one for each. And the white wire is gonna be the unlock, and the light blue wire is gonna be the lock wire. And these are positive triggers, but these are the ones that I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna be using, you know, these two wires right here. So just a green and a blue. So my green will be unlock and then the blue will be going to the lock wire right there. So let me just go ahead and start soldering them right here. And that's a, you know, another look right there at the two wires. So they're both gonna be together, you know. And if you don't have the power lock wires from your, from your truck, like let's say if it's a manual truck, then you're gonna need some type of alarm, you know, cause that way it has like a signal to control the door locks and the mirrors right here you will need to have a some type of security system or you know keyless entry that'll have the lock wires right there and they're all going to be positive triggered as well but that's what you want to do and in this case you know my truck came with the power lock so i'll just be using the factory wiring right here and there it is so now i went ahead and soldered them and here you can see like i said the green is going to be to the white on my unlock wire and then i'm using a blue wire on the light blue wire for my lock wire so you can use any colors you want. I'm just using these colors. In a flashback. And the way that the Cadillac switch right here is designed, it only uses one signal. That's why it only has this one button. You know, whenever you press it, it'll fold them. And then also pressing it one more time will unfold them. So whenever this relay harness gets hooked up to the mirrors, whenever you press lock on your remote, the mirrors will fold. But also if you press a second time lock, then the mirrors will unfold. And I just want to let you guys know that way you're not surprised whenever you press two times the mirrors will unfold or for example if you also press unlock once it'll unfold them but if you press it twice then it'll fold them back and it's just the way that this switch was made so it only had one input on there as you saw we only soldered one wire so that's all it does right there and other than that then I would just recommend you know doing the relay harness how I did it here so other than that if you don't want to do something like this then you know you can check out part two how i had the mirrors wired up right here on my truck with the relays and that has full control of the mirrors you know with the two inputs on the lock side and then one for the unlock and you know that way it won't do something like this but overall you know it'll make the mirrors work and you shouldn't have no issues so i just wanted to put it out there so you guys you know had an understanding of that right there so that's pretty much it right there guys once you have everything all set up your relay harness and your switch all modified with the pigtail right here then you should just be able to go ahead and install it and it should be pretty simple right there so next time that i get the truck to install this on i'll go ahead and shoot the video exactly showing you how it's all installed in here and everything but like i said it's going to be similar there's nothing real different right there except that you know mine has the traction control and i have my toggle switch so this won't be needed and then you may not have to have this right here because you're gonna have to have the escalate switch going right there so it'll be just like that so if i miss anything let me know down below in the comments and i'll see you guys in the next one we're gone.